Okay, in this video we're just going to cover an introduction to what a microemulsion is and then we'll go into the second video, we'll actually go into the microemulsion synthesis. Okay, so we'll start with a brief guide to microemulsions. There's three phases in a microemulsion. You've got your water, your solvent uh, and your surfactant. So that's the amphiphile, the surfactant molecules that are stabilising the droplets in your phase. Okay, so just stepping sideways for a, se uh, a second into um, into uh, surfactants and amphiphiles. These are molecules with two parts. Okay, so you have uh, the hydrophobic, the water-loving polar head group. Okay, so this is normally something um, uh, charged. So you might get, for this example, is an ammonium group. Uh, you might have a negatively charged uh, group um, on the, on so, so a sulfate, for example, sulfonate uh, on your surfactant, or you might just have something that's uh, rich in um, polar functionality, so something with hydroxyl groups on the end. Okay, so various uh, uh, functionalities on the end which make up the polar head group of your amphiphile. And then the second part of your amphiphile, so your molecule that has two parts, is your hydrophobic, so that's the water-hating non-polar tail group. Okay, this is normally just something like a long alkyl chain. In the case of CTAB, this is the, uh, this is the CTAB group, uh, the long alkyl chain on the end of the CTAB molecule. Okay, so CTAB is just one example. There's loads of different types of surfactant molecules out there uh, and lots that are used in uh, microemulsions. Uh, CTAB's um, actually used quite commonly in microemulsions. It's a really uh, widely used surfactant. Okay, so when we actually look at sort of schematics and, and when you look in papers or uh, textbooks about uh, emulsions and microemulsions, you'll often see the surfactant molecules represented like this, where you've got your, uh, your polar head group on the end and then just the tail group represented uh, as a line. So that's your non-polar uh, tail group of the surfactant. Okay, so talking about what a uh, microemulsion is, okay, when you have a microemulsion, some combinations of those three phases, so your oil phase, uh, your organic solvent, your aqueous phase, that's your water or your aqueous solution, uh, and your surfactant, some of those combinations can be mixed to give stable microemulsions. Okay, so what you've got there is one phase dispersed as droplets in the other phase. Okay, and the droplets that we're talking about are really quite small, 5 to 50 uh, nanometers. Okay, there's two types of microemulsions you can get. You can get water in oil microemulsions. Okay, that's droplets of water in an oil continuous phase. Okay, so our continuous phase is our oil, that's the organic surfactant. Our droplets are the water droplets, so they are aqueous droplets. And then the surfactant molecules are crowded around, uh, stabilizing that water droplet and preventing two water droplets that are next to each other from colliding and combining and then it, if eventually separating out into two phases, one on top of the other. Okay, likewise, you can get oil in water microemulsions. That's where you've got your oil droplets, your organic solvent droplets dispersed within an aqueous continuous phase, so dispersed in water. Okay, and the, uh, the surfactant molecules again are stabilizing that droplet. In this case, because the aqueous phase is on the outside, you've got your polar head groups around the edge poking out into the aqueous phase, and your non-polar tails, they're the ones sticking into the oil droplet. Okay, and again, they're stabilizing those droplets, preventing them from all coming together, coalescing, and having the whole system separating out into just two phases, one on top of the other like that. Okay, so they're stabilizing those droplets. Um, just a few important points before we get into microemulsion synthesis. One is that micelles are dynamic, okay? So they're constantly colliding and splitting apart, right? So you've got one droplet here that might collide with another droplet, uh, stick around for a bit, and then split apart back into two droplets again, okay? And when they do that, the contents mix. Okay, and that's what becomes important when we talk about microemulsion synthesis. Okay, uh, the second key point uh, on this page is that you can dissolve things in the aqueous droplet. So this micelle here, for example, that could be a droplet of water, or it could be a droplet of an aqueous solution of, for example, a metal salt. Okay, and just a final key point to mention uh, in this video, remember that these schematics that we're drawing of the different micelles, they are just 2D representations, okay? The micelles themselves are three-dimensional droplets where you've got your surfactants crowded around that spherical, uh, well, in, in, in our case, we're going to talk about spherical uh, droplets. You can get different sizes, uh, but they are 3D uh, structures, um, and, and we're just going to look at 2D representations of those 